Hey, it's Flake here in Ohio, completely of my own free will, and it is another fight night with Sam and Aiden. We got two new Dust Dildon heroes. We've got Vincent, we've got Prism. What do we have? A classic constructed gameplay. Classic constructed gameplay. See, they told me to say this so I get food. It's gonna be awesome. Did I do right? It's Aiden on Prism. What's up? And it's Sam on Vincent. Hmm. Do I get that to sleep indoors you. now? You can you can eat now. Oh, you can I get eat. to go you did home. Good. No, you can't go home yet. You can you eat. Can't go home. I'll see you soon. Hey, 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 hey. Stick around to the end of the video. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Stick around to the end of the video. Dust till dawn giveaway. You know you want it. Realm games. Realm games. You know you want it. Don't go anywhere. Day floating. Where are we, Sam? What are we doing? We are in Solana, as the forces of darkness have approached. Vincent the Iron Maiden beseeches the land, and Nazareth the Soul Harvester for aid. She comes for your soul! She comes for us all! Uh, we're in Ohio. I'm Prism, I'm reading some books. <laughs> Harold! <laughs> uh, we're in a massive barn right now. <laughs> Here for the Realm Games' Dust Dawn pre-release. Start so, All right, you got it. Blam. Snake eyes. <laughs> so the interesting thing is, we've talked about me going first is better because I can drop an aura. Yeah. But when I went first last time, the game was... You want me first? <laughs> but see, when you do that, it makes it look like you really want to go first. You want me first or you want first? I want first. Okay. Good luck, have fun. Yes, sir. We're on it. Prism. Awakener of soul. <laughs> <laughs> no Luminaris. Screw that noise. We're running Iris of Reality, the OG awesome. This deck list is brought to you by Andrew Rudin, a local from our game store in Pasadena. Andrew was so gracious to hop on the phone, gave us this list, helped me sideboard it into Vincent so I don't just lose. She's super cool because she's able to cheat in four resources of value at instant speed and gets to work at instant speed with these four cost yellow auras that will help me Keep Sam away from me. Getting tunic value, blocking. Just please don't kill me. I started 32 life. Find windows where I can establish multiple auras at once and then send them crashing into him with the Iris of Reality. So serious shout out to Andrew Rudin, one of the best players we know and one of our best friends. Who's your buddy over there? What buddy? Someone behind me? Uh, yeah. Doink! Vincette has a really cool ability where she can turn cards in her hand into rune chants by banishing them at the start of her turn. Now, when I say can, I do mean must, because Vincette must banish a card at the start of every single turn, and then she gets to make a rune chant. She gets to utilize this great new mechanic called Rune Gate, where if you control rune chants equal to the cost of a card with Rune Gate in your banish zone, you can play it for free, and those rune chants come along for the ride. So you're able to block with a couple cards, and then attack with your rune gated card, still getting a lot of value, hoping that nobody sends a frostbite. At you. This deck gonna be doing some classic rune blade things with some of those old shadow cards and some of the new Dust Till Dawn shadow cards in there because Vincent also can turn a shadow non-attack action into one unpreventable rune chant damage that I'm going to be trying to use to carve through Aiden's spectral shields and ward bull without further ado. Bring it on, illusionists. Bring it on, spectral shields. Let's fight. Tunic to one. I'm gonna play a war tune herald. Pitching this blue Herald of Protection. Floating two resources coming at you for seven Phantasm. So if you block it with a six power or more, it will pop and go to my graveyard. But if it hits, it's gonna go into my soul, which is good for me. It is good for you. And seven damage is bad for me. So I'm gonna block with this red Deathly Whale, one of the new cards from Dusk Till Dawn. And it does in fact have six power. Phantasm trigger upon the stack. So this hand is nuts. Let's break it down. Wartoon Herald, sending that in. He snap pops it. I have a figment of triumph, which gives all of his attacks minus one. He blocks the six. We're gonna instant speed that out. It is no longer popping my Herald, which means that damage is now going to come through because we've left the blocking stage, buddy. Figment of triumph. Pitch here, Definitely go to four, right give it minus one, it's yeah. now you're blocking for three. I'll take four. One, two, three, four. Soul! <laughs> this is gonna go into my soul. I'm gonna place it underneath my hero. When a card with Herald and its name is put into my soul, I can go grab a figment for free. So I'm gonna totally grab, oh my God, this is so good. That Herald's gonna hit, it's gonna charge into my soul. Prism's ability is gonna activate. I'm going to go grab Figment of Erudition. When that enters the field, I'm gonna set myself up with a Ponder. I didn't even think that I was gonna get to end up with an Arsenal playing this hand, but then once I realized that I could use these insane Figment effects, just cheating them out for free. Hold on, let me just make this clear. Let's just, hold on. I'm gonna pop a Wartoon Herald here, but now instead of popping a Wartoon Herald, 
Herald, he gets a figment out that can become an angel. And because the thing hits his soul, he can get another figment. You kept the Ponder one in. I'm gonna grab another one of these gorgeous cards, the figment of erudition. When this legendary figment enters the arena, I'm gonna create a Ponder token. Jesus. I'm going to create this nice little Ponder token. And I'm pitching this figment of judgment. So having that at the bottom of the deck, knowing I'm not going to draw into it is so good. This turn is ridiculous. We're ending with an arsenal. He takes damage, two figments on board. I almost wanted to do the dab, but I'm not Samuel O'Byrne, so. You can do the dab. <laughs> it's gonna be a long game. Unbelievable. And we're putting this one back in my deck, which is the number one one that I want to have in my deck. <laughs> Cash in this ponder at the end of my turn. Draw a card. I will arsenal this card. Is it an ALS? I'll send it back to you. <laughs> well, that couldn't have gone worse. Tunic to one. Vincent trigger at the start of my turn. Banish a card from my hand. If I do, create a rune chant token. I will banish a bounding demigon and make a rune chant. Next, play out Mauvern Skies. Dost thou have any responses? Nay. Okay. Bounding Demigon says, if I have played a non-attack action card this turn, I can play Bounding Demigon from my Abandoned Stone. If I do, it gets plus one. So this is gonna come along with the Rune Chant. It's going to get plus one, so it's gonna come in for four with one Rune Chant. If Bounding Demigon hits, I get to make three Rune Chants. Demigon, not as powerful as some of my other Rune Gate cards, but because I only have the one Rune Chant, it's actually a great way to start this turn because I need two Rune Chants or three Rune Chants for almost all the other cards I'm gonna be playing out of my Banish Zone this game. So on this first turn, actually a fine card to have here. I just gotta start pressuring that life total because now Aiden's got two Figments. I can't let him snowball auras into value. For the Rune Chant, we'll pitch this Herald of Ravages AB1 for the Bounding Demigon. Block three. Okay. And at instant speed, play this Parable of Humility. Okay. Pitching this Herald of Triumph, leaving one floating. Okay. And attack action cards controlled by you have minus one while attacking and defending. So it goes down from four to three. Damn, so you blocked me out. Blocking it out. Okay, but I still have go again. So I'm not gonna get to make a rune chant, but I am gonna pay one life to attack into the Parable of Humility with my Flail of Agony. So I'll trigger the Spectra. Well, sure. Goodbye. Get that out of there. All right, and then I will pass to you. Do you have anything else? No. Okay, arsenal card and pass. Start my turn, Tunic is gonna go to two. I am going to Arsenal and pass. Okay. Woof. All right. My tunic is going to go to two, and I drew a hand with four non-attack actions. At the start of the turn, I'm going to banish a card to Vincent the Iron Maiden. It's going to be this blue Mauvern Sky. So I'm going to make a rune chant. Then I'm going to go ahead and play Envelop in Darkness. The next attack I rune gate this turn gets plus three. That's not gonna be happening, but I will make a rune chant token. Then I'm gonna play Funeral Moon. These are two new cards from Dust Till Dawn. Funeral Moon says, I can play it from my Banish Zone, but it's not my Banish Zone. I can play it as though an instant if a hero has lost life, though that has not happened, but I will make a third rune chant going to three. Woof. So Aiden has started this game establishing those two figments. I have not really been able to pressure the life total at all. I arsenal a Mauvern Skies and I draw two Mauvern Skies and two ways to give me rune chance, which will be good for later in the game, but kind of the rune blade conundrum. You need to fill your decks with both non-attacks and attack actions, but if you get all of them together, it sometimes is really hard to do anything effective. And this hand does nothing. I'm going to pass the turn. Do you have any effects? I'll play out another Parable of Humility. Okay. Pitching Heart of Find All and float two. When I pitch the Heart of Find All, gain a life. Okay, continue to pass to the end of my turn. I am then going to pay two to use Prism Awakener of Soul's ability, which is a once per turn instant. I can banish a card from my soul and awaken one of my figments. Sick. Awakening the figment of triumph. So I'm gonna take this card of my soul and I'm going to banish it over here. This is a great turn for Sam to brick. He has no more go again. Let's drop down this parable. Let's use the extra floating to flip one of my figments. Now I have an archangel that's ready to attack and all because he ended with a card that doesn't have go again. Cause something I'm gonna be worried about in the future is he can always pay one and kill an aura with his flail. Cause it's a great way to end the chain. He doesn't need any additional cards to do that. But in this case, no action points, bathing in the value. I start my turn, Tunic is going to go to three. I'm gonna throw a Herald of Protection at you. This is coming in for seven, Phantasm. If it hits, I will put it into my soul and create a Spectral Shield token. My attacks have minus one right now. 
Attacking and defending. I hope that matters. It totally matters. Crazy matters. Crazy matters. Crazy matters. I think maybe it's worth it. I'm block nine. Since we were able to establish that parable of humility on Sam's turn, I can now send this Herald of Protection with the minus one effect on Sam's cards. So he would have to have a seven power in order to pop this here. He doesn't. Fantastic news. I want to take cards from his hand. The second the tempo switches in this game, I'm going to be on my back foot just doing everything I can to slow Sam down. I'm going to try to extend that lead as much as I can, throwing damage at him, taking cards from his hand, and just see how long I can keep him off of his crazy big turns. All right, no hit effects. This is just gonna go into the graveyard. Yep. And with that, I will pass. Back cool. to you. Start of my turn, Tunic to three. Start turn, Vincent. <laughs> gonna banish a widespread annihilation, which is gonna put me up to four rune chance critically. Then I'm going to play out a Mauvern Skies. Next rune blade attack action card I played this turn gains, go again. And if this hits, create three rune chant tokens. I got no response for you. Okay, then this is a widespread annihilation for five with four rune chants. Widespread annihilation is one of the new shadow rune blade attacks with rune gate, so I can play it for free from my banish stone if I have exactly enough or more rune chants equal to the cost. I have four, it costs four. It's coming in for five. When the combat chain closes, each hero who has lost life this turn banishes a card from their hand. This is the first time we're really getting to see Runegate in action. I was able to block nine on the last turn and still come at Aiden with nine total damage because of the parable, four arcane damage, and five physical. And if he takes any of it, he's gonna banish a card from his hand. So this is a cool part of what Vincent can do. Sometimes it takes a little bit of setup. So even though on that turn that I had all the non-attack actions, at least by setting up those rune chants, I set myself up for something really powerful here. That art is sick. <laughs> Bunk. <laughs> so good. I will A B a rune chant. Go to three. A B a rune chant. Why must you do it like this? A B a rune chant. <laughs> Go to one. A B a rune chant. New Prism is super resource heavy. This deck list is packed with blues. Once I get my auras going, they each cost three to swing with. So I need blues in my deck. And in this matchup, it is also very helpful to have a lot of blues because when he's throwing rune chants at me, I can pitch AB, AB and use the last floating to activate my Phantasmal Footsteps for a block and then cleanly block those breakpoints. Okay, do Phantasmal, thing one. Yeah, just blocking one. Move to reactions. Yep. Any from you? Nope. All right. Fate for scene, blocking the five. I will opt one. And be sent into the tank. <laughs> and be sent into the tank indeed, my god. Leave this on tip. Okay. I will spend a life to attack the parable of humility with my flail of agony. Nothing for me. Bye bye, parable. Okay. Cool. Parable is gone because of its spectra. Because this thing has go again, I'm able to take the flail, just pay a life, and clear that parable humility because that can't stick around any longer. I need to be using my cards to pop or attack, and either way, the parable gets in the way of that, so no more. On my turn. All arsenal. Okay. Draw four. Back to you. Thin set trigger, I'm gonna banish Howl from Beyond. So I'm going to make a rune chant. I'm going to play Howl from Beyond because I can do that from my Banished Zone, pitching this Mauvern Skies. So I have one floating. The next attack action card I played this turn gets plus three. Go again. Uh, when I do that, I'm playing a Shadow non-attack action card, so I'm gonna pay one life. So the next Rune Chant effect that would deal damage this turn cannot be prevented. Looks like Victoria is dying today. Not, not long for this world. We're going to Float Tunic. Yep. And then we're going to Pitch. Pitch for six to play an Arclight Sentinel. One of the best cards in this deck is the Arclight Sentinel. And when he plays this non-attack here in the form of the Howl from the Beyond, I get to respond to that with the Arclight Sentinel, which just means anything else that he was trying to play and juice up with that Howl is just going straight into my big yellow guy. Light Elemental. Big Bird. In response, Big Bird. I'm then gonna just play from my hand a Shadow of Urser. It gets plus three from the Howl from Beyond. However, I have to attack your little arc light sentinel now. Um, but this one damage cannot be prevented because of Vincent, so you have to take it. But your Victoria attempts to ward it, but Vincent goes, <laughs> and, and that's what she does? Yeah. Okay. And so, um. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. She does that. Yeah, again. I'm, I'm on the in with like what actually happens. Yes. <laughs> with, the, yeah. with the lore. With the lore. <laughs> so as I'm taking this, this one damage, what yeah. happens to Victoria? She goes, yeah, damn. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I was hoping for more there. <laughs> All right. Victoria dead. Victoria dead, and then the Shadowverser will uh, hit the Arclight Sentinel and kill the Arclight Sentinel, and that's going to end my turn because Spectra is a fun mechanic. Past you. 
It is. Start of my turn, tunic to one. Hail of protection. First seven. I will pop it. Uh, cool. And send it back to you. Oh, I have to banish to Vincent. Oh, that's fine. Whatever. Start a turn. Vincent trigger. I'm gonna go ahead and banish a runic reckoning. Create a rune chant. Feels really good. Just you know, feels great. Pop the tunic. Gain a resource. Use the resource on our rune blood incantation. So I will come in with three verse counters at the start of my action phase. I will remove a verse counter and then create another rune chant. Uh, and then I'll just attack you with the flail of agony. So I will lose a life, one rune chant, and if it hits, I will make a rune chant. That feels not great. I will take one rune chant, and I will pay for a <laughs> Cool. Uh, <laughs> put that on top. Okay, best turn. Tunic to two. Herald of Rebirth. When this hits, put it into my hero's soul and up to one card with Phantasm from my graveyard to the top of my deck. Okay. Um, for five. For five. I think. I will go ahead and say no blocks. Any reactions? No reactions. I'll take five. One, two, three, four, five. Going to 27. A couple things. This is going to go into my soul. When that happens, I have a prism trigger. I'm going to put this Herald of Protection on top of my deck. And I think I'll pass on the prism trigger. Okay. Arsenal here. After taking the five here, it's 27 to 31. Aiden started this game at 32 and he has more life than me. So clearly things are going right for him and I am fighting through the trenches. So I'm hoping to really just keep him off his auras, not go down too much in life. And I should be able to find one really big turn utilizing rune gate to kind of claw back in this game. But right now, even though I'm only down four, like I'm, I'm, I'm hurting, I'm hurting. Tunix is gonna go to one. Vincent trigger. I'm gonna get rid of this deathly delight. I'm not gonna get rid of it. I'm gonna banish it. It's gonna make a rune chant. Start of the action phase, Runeblade Incantation is going to trigger. It's going to go to two rune chants. I can't respond to Vincent's hero ability with the Banish because that's at the start of the turn, but the Runeblade Incantation is at the start of the action phase. So that's a priority window for me. And what I'm going to do here is pitch a blue, activate Halo of Illumination. I'm going to respond to that Runeblade Incantation. We're going to activate the Halo of Illumination, mm -hmm. pitching this Passing Mirage, floating two resources. Instant destroy Halo of Illumination, put a light card from my hand into my soul. If it's a light card, draw a card. I am going to charge this Herald of Protection that I put on the top of my deck. That's gonna be a Prism Trigger. That's gonna be a draw card. I will draw a card. And then I am going to go Got search for a Figment. You Got it. I'm gonna get that guy that we pitched a while back. The Figment of Judgment, probably my favorite art on a card. It's crazy. Just in my entire life ever. Crazy, crazy, crazy. I'm gonna shuffle my deck. When this legendary Figment comes into the arena, I'm gonna turn a card in any banished zone face down. So that Rune Gate card that you just put in there, flip that face down. You no longer have the Blood Debt, but you also cannot play that. <laughs> Blunk. Really shutting down his turn here. Whatever he throws at me is gonna be a lot less, a lot less scary. This is ALS light. This Halo play, it's good, it's cute, it's smart, but you only get it once. You're done now. No more. There's just gonna be a bounding demigon for two and three, because I can't do the other thing anymore. Hmm. I'll AB one twice. Okay. Three damage. Going to Sink. just jump to reaction. Sink. Yep. You got it. And I will sink this card. So on this sink from Arsenal, I have another sink in hand and this soul shield that I want to pocket in Arsenal. So I'm just gonna sink and sink the sink and then just hope that lines up for another breakpoint later. Okay, blocked out, pass to you. Tunic to three. I'm going to play a Herald of Rebirth, pitching this haze bending. Five damage with Phantasm coming at you with the effect of being able to grab one of my Heralds and putting it back on the top of my deck. Mm -hmm. Dude, I just have to take five here again. No blocks. No reactions. One, two, three, four, five. Down to 22. This is going to go into my soul. I have a prism trigger, but we've seen all the figments in my deck. Yeah, we have. So. We certainly have. Put the red Herald of Protection on top of my deck. Move to Arsenal. Cool. All right, sorry, my turn. Tunic, start of the turn, Vincent. We're gonna manage this Deathly Whale. So we're gonna make a rune chant. Rune Blood Incantation is gonna go down. It's gonna go make a two rune chants. Do you have any responses? Nope. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and play Envelop in Darkness. When I play the Envelop in Darkness, I will pay a life. It's a shadow non-attack action. It says create a rune chant. The next attack action card at Rune Gate gets plus three. And because it is a shadow non-attack, I can pay a life, which I just did. And the next rune chant effect that would deal damage this turn can't be prevented. 
Any responses? No, sir. Okay. That's going to make this three rune chants and nine damage. The first of the rune chants you cannot prevent. That is, that is big ones. Finally doing something, dude. Jesus. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. <laughs> no, I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying so hard. Um, okay. So I can't prevent that first rune chant, so I will go to 30. Mm -hmm. Then I will pitch one, AB one, take one more. That's all three rune chants. Nine damage coming at me. Soul Shield and Arsenal, Sink Below in hand. I'm just gonna say no blocks and cover this perfectly with D-Reacts. We are going to say no blocks, reactions. Yeah. I've got a pummel. Pummel town. It's going to add an additional four. Well. Shit. <laughs> 13 damage. 13. Casual. You've got clearly a soul shield, but he has pummel. So we need to find another way to not lose cards from our hand and just eat more damage. That is terrifying. Luckily, figments are on board. I'm looking at this. Prism allows me to pitch two, flip, and just turn one of these angels into four ward. How are you doing, brother? What do you want? Block with a soul shield from Arsenal. Okay. That blocks. Six. Uh, sink below. Damn. That blocks. 10, I'll say. <laughs> I will say no sync. Okay. And then I'm going to pitch two to Prism to awaken one of my guys. Okay. So one of you one of you needs to dive on this grenade for me. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know which one. They're both so pretty. Dude, uh, how do you cover all this up? <laughs> One of you needs to dive on this grenade for me. <laughs> <laughs> Your addition. Okay. Honestly, not very sure which is right here, but I like the judgment art more. So you want to look at it throughout so the game? I just want to look at it throughout cool. the game. Cool. Awakening. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but look at that, bro. Yeah. It's God nuts. damn. Freaking nuts. So, uh, pay to banish. Uh, I now have a ward four on the board that is going to cover up the damage unless you have any other. No, I'm out of cards in hand. So... Thank you, Soraya. <laughs> Diving on that grenade. <laughs> Editing Aiden here. This was a very long turn, both in filming and even in cutting it down. Lots of interaction in that chaos. We missed the trigger on the close the chain of the Deathly Whale. Sam paid a life earlier for his Shattered on attack. I took some runechant damage. So the Deathly Whale should be making two runechants here for the two heroes that lost life this turn. So it ends up just being two damage, but obviously two damage of flesh and blood can mean a lot. Both of us missed it. So we'll just take this as a moment to remind ourselves to always keep an eye on the board state. All right, back to the video. Draw four and pass. My friend, I am going to arsenal and pass. Start of turn tunic. Start of turn Vincent. Make a rune chant. Rune blood incantation. Make another rune chant. Play out. Modern skies. No reaction. Okay. This is two and six. If it hits, make two rune chant tokens from Modern skies. AB two. Six damage coming at me. Yep. If it hits, make two rune chants. No blocks? Take six. No reactions. Okay, I'll make two rune chant tokens. All right. I have been able to keep my life total up pretty high, and now I'm looking at a Genesis, which is one of the most important auras into my game plan of getting cards into soul, making spectral shields, drawing cards. It's nuts. So Aiden seems to be committed to not blocking here, which means, yes, he probably has a scary turn, but I have like the perfect turn to punish a no block. This is a swarming gloom veil for two and four. All modes are active because I've made four rune chants on the turn. I'm gonna clear this from the chain. I'll AB one rune chant, take the other one. Four damage. No blocks. Take four. You can no longer prevent arcane damage for the rest of the turn. This is gonna be Swarming Gloom Veil. Four more. No blocks. Take four. I'm watching his life total chunk down. He's at 14 at the end of the turn. Like all of a sudden I've been like, ah, how do I, how I? This me in the driver's seat. Into, the, into a W lane. If I think you're trying to instant speed out a aura, you have two in hand, three in hand, like a Genesis or something. Pass the turn. 
I'm taking a pit stop from W lane to go into analysis drive. Shut up, shut up, Let, shut up. When I see that Aiden is seemingly willing to just like take all the damage in the world and he just has that one floating, he eventually gives me the one floating, but I'm thinking, what the hell is this? Like alarm bells are going off. Why did he have that one floating after giving me the rune chance? Looks like he's gonna try to resolve a four cost aura and it's probably a Genesis because why else would he take all that damage? He wants the start of turn trigger on his turn. He's sitting on go again. I have been showing that resource and Sam's a smart player. He knows how priority and passing works. Pass priority, do your thing. No, I don't want to do my thing. You're just going to flail it. Pass is good. Okay. This stays here. Float tunic. Yep. One resource. Play out a Genesis. And then throw a Herald of Protection at you. One floating. Hub it. Hub it. That's good. Okay. Uh, start a turn, Vincent trigger. I'll banish a runic reckoning. Start a turn, rune blood incantation trigger. I will now destroy it unless you have any effects. Nope. Okay. I'm going to attack the Genesis. Okay. Genesis dies. Okay. Sam obviously doesn't want me to keep this Genesis. He didn't want me to put it on the board on his turn and he doesn't want me to have it on the board, but my deck says otherwise and gives me another one. <laughs> so we're going to play it out in response to him breaking the Spectra. Your turn is over, buddy. And I'm playing a second Genesis and I'm gonna use that, charge my soul, draw cards, Spectral Shield, boom, boom, three damage. <laughs> Two? We are going to play out another Genesis. Pitching six, float two. Another Genesis. Then I'm going to use the remaining two to flip the figment of judgment. Cool. You absolute sheet. Famous. And I will banish a card from soul to do that. All right, uh, then I will just continue to pass to the end of my turn. And I will pass to you. All right. Start of my turn, tunic. Start of my turn, Genesis. We'll do it. Charge my soul, prism trigger. As we know, there's nothing left for me. Draw a card, fantastic. I will also make a spectral shield. I will pay into Iris of Reality, which says during my action phase, illusionist auras, I control our weapons with four power and once per turn action, pay three, attack, go again. Cool. Pew. Spectral shield for four, huh? Yep. Spectral shield for four. Uh. We're out here in the forest outside Solana. What are we looking for, Sam? Well, I, I've been hearing these whispers. That's from, super chill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From this uh, woman named Vincent. She's telling me that we've got to find this like rune gate to the realm. They've got like pretty incredible prices and apparently a way to defeat the demonastery. Sick. Yeah. That's great. Here's the team. Gotta be a responsible documentarian. Cool. Should we see what we can find? Come on, Blake. Hey, pull it together. Oh, tricky terrain. All right, Sam, the whispers are getting louder. Yeah, I'm... I heard something. What was that? Uh, my light's tweaking out. Dude, what is that? Dusk tile down? Oh, dust till dawn, oh, for sure. Oh, dust till dawn, yeah, that makes sense. What can that mean? That means we're on the right track. Okay. Come on, Flake. We've been walking for miles. Still no clues. The whispers have quieted down. I don't know if we're going on the right track anymore. We found them. Oh, Light of soul? Ah. What? It's like cold. Eh, probably nothing. I, uh, I think I need another hot dog. What do you mean? Hot dog, dude. I don't want another one. You weren't eating a hot dog. Flesh and Blood Cruise giveaway at the end of the video! Dust till dawn! Sponsored by Realm Games. Okay, I will say no blocks. No reactions. Take four. One, two, three, four. Down to 16. That I will pass. Draw up. 
send it back to you. The start of the turn, I have a Vinset trigger. I'm gonna banish this yellow Mauvern Skies. Doesn't feel good. Going to play out a Shadow Puppetry. Going to pay a life. So the next Rune Chain effect that would deal damage this turn can't be prevented. It's gonna mess with my board. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. No response. Okay, then we're gonna go ahead and just, if what people on the internet say is true, both of these wards are going to attempt to stop this room chant and they cannot. So I'm gonna eat both your wards, please. <laughs> <laughs> Taking one, both of them try so hard, but are unable to stop the power of the rune chant. It's five because of the shadow puppetry. When the combat chain closes, I will create rune chant tokens equal to the number of heroes who have lost life this turn. Equal. So Deathly Whale here is one of the best cards in the deck because a really cool thing about all these new Shadow Runeblade cards is they're not on hit triggers, they're how many heroes have lost life triggers. So if you can push unblockable damage through with Vincent's ability and in doing so, pay a life yourself, boom, you've turned it on, X equals two, you're golden. Now it's just damage, bro. Like, I've already hit. We're going to block with footsteps and brothers in arms. Paying two. I'm able to pitch a yellow into Phantasmal Footsteps and Brother in Arms, cleanly block a five, only losing one card from my deck. Fantastic numbers to block the five. Cool. At the end of the turn, I'm gonna pay another life and attack the Genesis. Genesis. Gone. When the combat chain closes, Deathly Whale is gonna trigger. We both lost life, so I'm gonna get two, res two rune chants. <laughs> you wanted to say resources. I'd love it to be resources, but I guess they just go away. They basically are resources for you. That's true, King. Tunic to two, passing mirage and pass. Okay, passing mirage into passing. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and put this deathly delight into the banish zone for the Vincent trigger. Get a rune chant. Rune chant. We're gonna go ahead and play out a shadow puppetry. I think I will respond. Okay. Going to play out an arc light sentinel. There she is. Pitching six. Um, I'm then going to just go ahead and still do this. Attacking the art like Sentinel, but three arcane damage is coming at you. Uh, bink, bink, bink. Okay. Down to 10. And then that's all for the turn. So you know how Vincent goes. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. The arc light Sentinel, when there's damage, it just goes. <laughs> cool. That's, that's canon. I thought I was the only one with canon. Well, you actually told that to me. I, I extracted it from your memory. Jesus <laughs> That's Christ. Right. I'm just gonna go ahead and draw two cards, weirdo. <laughs> Ask to you. Um, okay, Tunic's gonna go to three. I'm going to float Tunic for a resource and use that to play a War Tune Herald for seven. No Phantasm because of the Passing Mirage. That makes sense. Seven big ones. Seven of the big ones. Damn the big ones. Damn right there. <clears throat> That's the big ones. You shut up. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, yo, whoa, 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 whoa. So, seven damage sucks. Wharton Herald to the soul sucks. But I look at my hand, and I think I can threaten more damage than I would take. So, that's an exchange I'm willing to make here. No blocks. You may have this one. No reactions. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Go to seven. When that hits, that's going to go into my soul. Let's go. Bam. Terrible for me. More soul. Three soul. Four cards. Okay. Into my hand. Back to you. Alrighty. Start of the turn. Vincent is going to trigger. We're gonna put a widespread ruin in there. Get a resource. Play a shadow puppetry. Pay a life this time. Go to six, so the first rune chant can't be prevented. I'm gonna break my vexing quill hand. Go to three rune chants. I'm gonna play out a Howl from Beyond. Next attack action card I played this turn gets plus three. I'm gonna then play the widespread ruin from my banished zone. This is coming in for three and nine, the first of which you simply must take. I have one floating. <laughs> From the Howl from Beyond. You simply must take You simply must take it. Since I simply must, yeah. I'll go to nine. Two more rune chants coming at me. It's actually 10 because of the shadow puppetry. <laughs> when the combat chain closes, each hero who's lost life this turn will banish the top card of their deck. We're going to AB2. Okay. That was AB2 <laughs> for the, <laughs> the un at home. for the uninformed. We'll say no blocks, move to reactions. Mm -hmm. Play out. A soul shield blocking six of your ten. Taking four? Taking four. One, two, three, four. Down to five. Okay. End of the turn, I will pay one more life. I will also go to five and I will attack the passing mirage. Okay. Flail of Agony here has been not really threatening rune chance as much as it's been kind of like a way to take one damage, clear an aura, which 
I take that. We missed the widespread ruin trigger. I should have banished the top card of my deck. Sam should have as well. So missed it, but I have enough cards in my deck that it shouldn't matter. I'm pitching cards into my deck. If anyone's going to fatigue, it is him. The soul shield's gonna go into my soul. You killed my mirage. Start a turn, two next to one. Yep. Well, that is just a flat out shame. That it's not at three? No, Ooh! At even life. Heard. Seven. Oh, pop it. Yeah, that is good. Sheesh, sheesh, sheesh. Oh, now this is a bummer because I'm going to have to banish to Vincent here. Okay. I'm going to banish Runeblood Incantation to Vincent. Going to go to one rune chant. And then I'm just going to play out a Spellblade Assault. So that's going to come in with one rune chant. It's going to come in for four. It's actually going to make me two rune chants in the back, which I will represent with that rune chant in just a moment once you decide what you're doing. First rune chant, I'm going to AB1. Okay, two rune chants in the back. We're going to block like this. We're going to pay one into the footsteps. Give me four total. Give me four. I'll pass. I'll pass as well. Spell bit I saw here a one of in the list to try to keep the ratios where I want them, but I really like it because it sets me up with two rune chants, which is gonna help me on these rune gate turns try to close this game out. We're in the end game now. Yeah. Spooky. Tunic to two. Shimmers of silver. Arsenal pass. Mm hmm. Vincent trigger, we will banish this widespread ruin. We'll go to three. Three. Three and six. Whew. It's a crazy little end game. For your rune chance, I will AB into the Null Rune Gloves three times. Six? Yep. In reactions, I'm gonna go ahead and activate Spellbound Creepers. Mm -hmm. Play out our Runeblood Incantation at instant speed. Comes in with three verse counters. Critically gives me go again. That's all. So I'll have go again on the attack. Runeblood Incantation will be chilling over here. Uh, then I'm gonna attack into the Shimmers of Silver, pay a life, killing the Shimmers of Silver, and then after I paid the life, in reactions, I will play this and create a rune chant because I can play it as an instant because I hear how I was lost life this turn. I will kill the Shimmers of Silver and I will pass to you. Start of my turn, Tunic, two, three. I will play out a Haze Bending. Okay. Oh, uh, at the end of your last turn because I didn't deal arcane damage to you, my Spellbound Creepers die. I will draw four cards and pass back to you. Okay. Start of turn, Vincent Trigger. Give me a Deathly Delight. And this is gonna go down to two. I'll go to three. Do you have a response to this? I do. Arc Light Sentinel. Runeblood Incantation, again, is one of the biggest engine pieces in the deck. Unfortunately, a side effect in this matchup is it creates a layer on the stack in my action phase that I don't get to choose. It just goes off. And that's something that Aiden is able to ALS in response to. So it's a tough thing where like, I do need the card to be turning on all my rune gate stuff, but it would be way more awesome if it didn't also give Aiden a free window to just turn this turn off, which like backbreaking. ALS. I'm going to attack the ALS with my rune gated thing. Mm -hmm. So this is three and five. So you have three arcane, and then this is going to kill the ALS. I'll say no AB. Okay. Because its effect doesn't happen, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. In response to the Spectra trigger, pop my tunic, float a resource, and play Invert Existence. So I'm going to banish two cards in an opposing hero's graveyard. And then I need to banish an attack action and a non attack action. Actually, I guess for just in case, I'll get rid of the Herald of Protection. So. Now that I've banished a non-attack and an attack, I will deal two arcane damage to you. Do I have my spectral shield yet from haze bending? No, because I'm responding to the spectral trigger. Two arcane, very, very scary. I have one AB that's always going to send damage through. He has ways to do unpreventable damage. I will respond yeah. with, with a sigil oh, of solace. Oh, okay. Gain three. Thank you. Play this, gain three life. We're back in the race. And I have a little bit more life to play with. Two arcane doesn't hurt as much. Take two? Take two. Okay, Arc Light Sentinel will die. You will create a spectral shield. I will go ahead and arsenal this card. Uh, that is the end of the turn. Arsenal pass. Tunic to one. I'm gonna go ahead and banish Shadow of Urser, which is gonna make me a rune chant. Rune Blood Invocation is gonna make me a rune chant. Two rune chants. This is gonna come in because I'm gonna play the Shadow Averser now. I'm gonna go ahead and banish a card with Blood Debt. So this is coming in for two Arcane, two Physical with Go again. AB1 twice. Two Physical. Block two. Okay. This is a Swarming Gloom Veil for four because I've created two Rune Chants. Uh, no blocks, reactions? No reactions. Fate for Scene. I will opt one. I'm gonna bottom this card. With my Go again, I'm gonna hit the Flail of Agony. 
In reactions, I'm gonna play Funeral Moon. Getting a rune chant. Now that I've lost life, I can play it as an instant. Okay, what are you flailing? Flailing the haze bending. That's gonna make me a second spectral shield. Yep. All right, that's my turn. So I need you for four go again. Go block two and two. And I'm going to sync this card. Arsenal pass. Okay. Iris of Reality here is now doing the work. I'm able to block out, keep a blue. That's four damage that I'm sending back at him that he has to deal with. Start of turn tunic to two. Fin set, I'll get rid of a bounding demigon. Rune Blood Incantation is going to pop and go down, so I'll have three rune chants. I'm going to go ahead and play this out. It's an envelop in darkness. It's going to make me a rune chant. I'm going to pay the life. So then I can come in with this bounding demigon for four and four. Uh, and then you have to take the first one, and I'll eat both those spectral shields because I paid the life to Vincent. All right, so let's do that. I'll take one. Three arcane, four physical. AB3. Okay, four physical. Unfortunately, this Envelop in Darkness only affects cards I Rune Gate, and the Bounding Demigon, while it's coming from my Banished Zone, is not Rune Gate. So I'm just playing the Envelop in Darkness to force through unblockable damage. I'm so close, though this extra three power would have been very nice. No blocks. Okay. Reactions? No reactions. I have a sink below. Sink. Going to sink this card. Heart of the cards. That's it for me. Seven big ones at you. I will pop it. All right. We are going to Arsenal and pass then. Start turn tunic. We go ahead and banish and make a rune chant. And then I am just gonna pass the turn. Oh, this pops. And then I'll pass it down. Herald of Ravages. Ravages. This is for five with an on hit, one arcane, and charge my soul. Uh oh. Pitching here, floating one. Yeah, I'll block five. No reactions, no damage. Pass. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Start a turn, banish a pummel, make a second rune chant, and then I will just tunic fire the inburn existence for two arcane. He's closing in. He can feel it. The opponent's deck runs thin. The first win on the channel. It approaches. I don't I don't think so. If you can find a way to do unpreventable. A B one. Okay, take one. Pass to you. Is it over? Depending on what you do. <laughs> just gonna send this Herald of Triumph, and hopefully that minus one will be just what I need in order to get two cards from him. Herald of Triumph. Four. Five. Pitching there. Popping. Minus one. Hell to try and minus one. Attack action cards get minus one. No! While defending. That sucks. That's a crazy one to have. Fuck. Just block five. Uh, no effects. Turn it to one. I got one card left in deck. I need to catch you slipping. I don't think I'm gonna do it. Vince that trigger. Pitch this widespread destruction. Make a rune chant. First, Mauvern Skies. But it's not a shadow card. <laughs> so it's just three and six. AB1, three times? Yep, six coming in. <laughs> six coming in. Six coming in. I'm gonna go straight to reactions. Boom. And a soul shield. Did that card block? A little bit. One. Uh, I'll float Tunic. Yep. And use that to pay for footsteps. Yeah, you will. Uh, no arsenal, because I got one card left. One to one. <laughs> the soul shield goes into my soul. Yeah, it does. This goes to the bottom of my deck. Pierce reality pass. Okay. Turn it to two. Vincent trigger. Uh, well, I'll put this widespread annihilation into the banish zone, which I can't attack with. I'll attack you for one, paying a life. I got one card left. Nothing I can do. You've done it, sir. <laughs> You've done it. Let's go! <laughs> he made it! He's one on the show! Prison! I got nothing left in deck here, man. We tried. We were one damage off. Probably somewhere in that game we could have found one more damage. But, alas, I had some clunkers. He had some just incredible shit that was perfect. And he played it beautifully. And if there was any game to allow Aiden 
graciously, might I add, Hello. to have his first win on our YouTube channel. I'm happy it was against me in this beautiful forest <laughs> that we get to be playing cards in. But I was one, one damage off. Oh. Thanks, Realm Games. One damage. <laughs> you fatigue me. Can't find one damage. That's a you problem. That's a you problem. Can't find one damage. And he just dies to his own ability. We successfully put Vincent back into the shadows. <laughs> As dusk sets, dawn will surely rise again, as this prism is so fun to play. And it also got me my first win on fight night. Yay! I did it! Yay! I don't have a trophy because we are, uh, oh, no. <laughs> we're away, but, uh, yeah! Prism. That's the game. This is the, the winner's lap. I am the advent of thrones. Dust till dawn is here. At the end of the day, I'm sitting on the throne. You are. So we have a giveaway. We do. Do you want a dust do you want a box of dust till dawn? Have you seen those marvels? Bruh. Head to Twitter, tweet a link to this video. Hashtag three floating. T-H-R-E-E -E floating. Hashtag. We're gonna pick a winner in exactly a week, and we've gotten all our giveaways out perfectly on time. But it is coming, I promise. Thank you to The Realm Games for sponsoring not only the giveaway, but the whole the whole entire channel. channel. They're the best. They really do the cool stuff. <laughs> They've got a 20K tournament happening in December. I'm and, playing in it. And, I'm qualified. And next year, it's a <clears throat> 50K. It's a 50K next year. Register. Come play. We'll be there. Brawls. Brawls. Prism. Vincent. Fight Night. Dust Till Dawn. Thanks for watching. Flesh and Blood. Flesh and Blood.